military personnel. Attend. Hut. And salute.
Armed Services of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for telling that. Thank you. Let us now proceed to parking lot A for the ceremony. Parking lot A. After a year off, I'm happy to be back speaking with the awesome students and faculty of St. Mary's School. As always, speaking for the planning committee and the administrators of St. Mary's School and Parish, I welcome the veterans in attendance today. It's nice to see a lot of uh, friendly faces that I remember from years past. Uh, for those of you new to this event, uh, my name is Major Eric Ponzek. Uh, my son Nathan is an eighth grader at St. Mary's School. And every year I like to embarrass them. Hey, stand up, put your hand up. Thank you. All right, sit down, that's enough. All right, I've been involved with the St. Mary's um, CYO program after, over the past couple of years. Uh, I still coach basketball. Uh, I really enjoy um, being with the kids and, and uh, the, the coaching has really been a, an awesome part of uh, my life and watching these kids grow over the past couple of years has been really awesome. Uh, we have excellent guest speakers today, uh, State Representative Tracy Pennycook, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew O'Connor, and former Principal Mr. Kevin Conwell. Uh, veterans, if able, uh, please stand. Sergeant Major, post the colors. Present off.
students to please stand for the national anthem. of the wreaths in front of me. You are all-powerful, God, and live forever in light and joy. Look with pity and love, we beg you, on those men and women who fought bravely and gallantly died for their country. By laying down their lives, they showed supreme love for others except we ask you their sacrifice and their belief in the justice of the cause they died for let their offering not be in vain please forgive any sins and faults they may have committed speedily we implore you bring them into your presence where fear sadness mourning and death cannot exist have pity in your loving kindness on those they leave behind. In your own unsearchable ways, make good for their absence and lavishly bestow your love and consolation on those deprived of their presence. This we ask in the name of Christ, our victor, king, and peacemaker now and forever. Amen. The Blessing of the Reeds Good and gracious God, we humbly implore you to bless these reeds. A symbol of those who have given the supreme sacrifice of their life for us and our great country. May their souls and all the souls of the faithfully parted, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Pleasure to introduce our next guest speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew O'Connor. Colonel O'Connor is a local resident of Skipback Township and has a son in Catholic grade school and a daughter at Pope John Paul High School. I've worked for Colonel O'Connor since 2007, which is before many of the students here were even born. Uh, he's been instrumental in helping me become the officer that I am today. Uh, we've conducted countless training missions on U.S. soil and have deployed to the combat zone of Iraq together. 
He's a valued leader in the Pennsylvania Army National Guard, and he's who I call when I need guidance, whether military-related or questions about Pope John Paul. Uh, I'm thankful that he accepted my invitation to speak with you today. Brother O'Connor. All right, so uh, I'd like to thank St. Mary's Father uh, for having the ceremony and inviting me to come and speak to veterans. But because of uh, the, my presentation here, I'm going to askew the microphone, and I'm going to try to speak as loud as I can so that everybody can hear me. And I'm going to tell you, it's like the bishop coming for confirmation, right? I'm going to be asking questions of the students about Memorial Day and things like that. And if you can't answer, then uh, Mr. Ponte told me that he's spoken to you like six times, so if you can't answer, that means he hasn't been doing his job. And then he's going to be my assistants up here uh, are going to uh, help me with my props. I'm going to try to speak over the truck, right? The truck's kind of loud, so I'm trying to listen up, all right? So, does anybody know what today, May 28th, is? Anybody? All right, so, today is actually... likes hamburgers. If you like hamburgers, raise your hand, right? Eating a hamburger makes you happy. Yeah, yes. Any hamburgers over here? Yeah. Alright, we're here today to celebrate hamburgers. <laughs> no, right, we're here, and if you remember what uh, Father said during his homily, we're here to remember people that came before us, right? That uh, sacrificed themselves. So, you know, does anybody know what the Memorial Day was originally called? Uh, that's in November. Decoration Day. Thank you very much. Right. So today was originally called Decoration Day because people would go in 1866 after what war ended in 1865? Eighth graders should know. Who knows? Right here. Civil War. Exactly. Right. So the Civil War ended in 1866. People started to decorate the grave of soldiers that had fallen in the Civil War because they wanted to remember their sacrifice, right? That war was fought for many reasons the country united and also resulted in the end of slavery, right? To allow all Americans to live with liberty. So, but why then eventually the World War One happened, the other wars, and fight continued to remember those who had fallen and they changed the name to Memorial Day to remember those who had fallen, right? But we remember a lot of things, we did lots of things. We had National Hamburger Day, right? We had Christmas Day, where we remember the birth of Christ. We had President's Day, where we remember the uh, some great presidents that came before us. So generally, we probably remember things that have importance to us, that have value, right? So value can mean a lot of things. values. 
The Constitution is one. What was the very document, though, that outlined why America needed to exist? The Declaration of Independence, right? So, <laughs> so here, right, is the Declaration of Independence, right? And right in the second sentence of the Declaration of Independence, it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? So, so those you could say are American values. That's why we want to remember right, things that are important, things that value life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So eating a cheeseburger could be pursuing happiness. But again, that's not why we're here. We're not here to remember a cheeseburger. We're here to remember people that have a uh, We remember those who have fallen, right? So this is a picture of a cemetery in France. It's called the Meuse Argonne American Military Cemetery. It's the largest military cemetery, uh, American military cemetery in France. Um, in Western France, it has 14,246 graves of American service members who fell in World War I. This was, they fell during the first large, large battle fought by Americans in France. Right? And each one of these little dots, little white dots here, is a grave. Okay? So, 14,000 graves of Americans that fought and died, and why? Why did they die? Why did they fight? Well, I got the pleasure, I got the opportunity to visit this cemetery, and I met a man there named Leaves. Leaves was a 77-year-old French citizen, and this grave that he's got his hand on, he adopted. He and his wife take care of three graves in that cemetery on every Memorial Day, which is an American holiday, not a French holiday, right? Veterans Day or Armistice Day on November 11th, it's Independence Day, which is our Independence Day, not French Independence Day. And he makes sure that this grave, the others that he adopted, is clean, has flowers, and all that. And so someone asked him, why, why would he do that? He's a French, a French citizen, he's not an American. And he said, because your country came to mind twice to liberate us, to give us liberty. And he said, I don't know if my country would do the same for you. So he was right. We did. All right, so he was right. We did send American forces over there. We did it twice, right, in World War I and World War II to liberate France. But what he was wrong about was whether his country would come do it for us. Because anybody here seen Hamilton? Yeah. Hamilton fans, right? The whole first act, right? Who was some of the important French players in Hamilton? You know the characters? No, uh, he wasn't French. Go ahead. Lafayette, right? The Marquis de Lafayette. Who else? Jefferson was in France for a while. The other guy was a guy by the name of Comte de Rochambeau. The Comte de Rochambeau, based on a treaty with Simon France in 1778, I think, brought ships that broke the, the British uh, blockade, and he brought money, and he brought troops. And without the French commitment, without their friendship to America, we would not even exist. So when we sent forces over here in World War I, and again in World War II, we were, we were standing up for our friends in France. So we said, you know, we talked about pursuing happiness, right? A value. We talked about liberty, right? Preserving liberty or restoring liberty. But is it worth your life to do that? Well, if anybody is paying attention, on May 9th, everybody remember what the gospel was on May 9th? If you remember, you can't, you can't answer, Father. Right? If you can remember, raise your hand. I, I don't remember either, but it was May 9th, as a matter of fact. It was from John chapter 15, and it included verses 12 and 13, where Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. 
okay, well, love, love means a lot of things. I love cheeseburgers, right? So what did he mean by that? He said the highest form of love, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So for example, these we remember, which Father said today, today I remember what Father talked about remembering. He said remembering is a, like, I have a fan attention. He said it's a holy act, right, during his homily. So that's why we remember. So who has school on Monday? Anybody? You have school on Monday? No. You must have done something wrong. No. All right. So you guys have done such a great job. You guys can all have off on Monday. All right. But on Monday, so who's doing something fun this weekend? Maybe doing a barbecue, going to the pool. Anybody? Going to the shore, visiting family, right? I'm going to visit family right after this. It's the first time I've seen it since last August. So if you are exercising American values by pursuing happiness, right, if you're eating a cheeseburger, just take a moment on Monday and throughout the weekend to remember those who gave what Abraham Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion, who gave their life to preserve liberty or restore liberty, and who modeled Jesus Christ himself. Who, you know, these, these people and those that have fallen, right, restored, they gave us freedom to live and in the example of Jesus who died to give us freedom from death. So that's why we do the holy act of remembering and that's what we need to do this weekend. Just take a moment, say a prayer, maybe say a, say, say a prayer to, say, to Mary after your namesake here at St. Mary's to thank those who have come before so that they will be remembered as a holy act for the rest of your lives. Thank you very much, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this presentation, and I'd like to thank my, my prop holders here. You did a great job. Thank you.
like I was saying, the rank of major is one below uh, lieutenant colonel. So we have two lieutenant colonels here and me as the, the lowly major. Uh, next year I'll work on getting some lower ranks presenting so I can feel a little more important. Uh, so the next um, speaker is State Representative Tracy Pennycook. Uh, she retired from military service in 2010 at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, Representative Pennycook is a command and staff a college graduate and former helicopter pilot. I overheard her speaking today that she um, has children in, in military service today. So it's my pleasure, uh, Representative Pennycook, to introduce you today. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. On this Memorial Day weekend, we gather to do so faithfully every year to remember those who have served and fallen in defense of liberty and democracy. Today, we take time to remember all the soldiers, airmen, and sailors who have given their lives serving America, from the Revolutionary War to the conflicts that still take place overseas. These men and women have not fallen in vain. They gave their lives in service to this great nation to preserve freedom for the generations and generations to come. They preserve our rights of free speech, free assembly, freedom of religion, and the right to bear arms among many of our very unique freedoms that make America the greatest country in this world. I know what it's like to serve overseas far from home in a land you don't understand with a language you don't speak. And I know the challenges of that service. Every man and woman who serves deserves our respect and our support every day, but most importantly this weekend, as we remember those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. I wanna take a minute to tell you about a few of those people that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. During Desert Storm, Major Marie Rousey was the mama bear of the five lieutenants, the female lieutenant helicopter pilots that were gonna be on the battlefield for the first time recognized in battle. She gave us immense lessons learned. She told us to stay true to ourselves as women, but remember we were part of a team. Remember where you came from, Remember your family at home? We were all newly married. We were all a little scared. And we all didn't know what to expect. When she died, the call went out. She was down. But every parent at home didn't know which of the females the helicopter pilots had been killed. She blazed a trail for those that would follow. The second I want to remind you of today, I don't know his name. He was a young specialist. He had been blown up in an IED attack in Afghanistan. He was stable and returning home on a flight from Bagram to Kuwait. We talked a little. And we talked about he was the Catholic kid that went to Catholic school. He didn't do so good. He spent a lot of time with the priest talking about what you don't do at Catholic school. He wasn't a good student. He got a lot of C's. He was a bit of a hell raiser. He did a lot of penance. Went to confession every week. He went into the military because his parents wanted him to straighten himself out. He was a young infantry soldier who hit an IED. We talked a little, as you do on a long flight and you've got wounded on board, because they're on a stretcher and you're able to move around. And we talked about what it was like to be Catholic and have mass on the side of a mountain in between battles. We talked about what it was like to be asked to take communion. Father, I'm not worthy. I'm not a good Catholic. You're the only one going to that forward operating base. Put it in your pocket and give it to your fellow Catholics. We talked about what it was like to worry about our parents back home 
and our friends and what our friends were doing back home. What do you think they're doing on a Friday night? He talked about the equipment that he carried, the hundreds of thousands of dollars of technology the U.S. Army gave him to do his mission, and how his peers were drinking beer and hanging out in college, and he felt privileged to carry on that role. He would die during that flight, but he would die in the service of his country. He was proud, and he was willing to do that so that you could have each and every freedom. The last person I'm going to tell you about is Major General Harry Green, the highest officer to die in our latest conflict. He died by a sniper's bullet in Afghanistan. He's slightly overweight, Jewish guy. When he made the list for Brigadier General, he said, I can't believe that we are so desperate that I got the nod. I'm overweight. Jewish, I'm not particularly a good speaker, and I, 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 I kind of am a little bit of a geek. <laughs> he was working to bring stabilization to the region. He left behind a son who is now a captain in the Army. He left behind a wife who's a retired full colonel, 30 years of service. He wouldn't have had it any other way. I also want to remember those World War II veterans that went away as young men to a battlefield where there were no iPhones, there were no porta potties, there were no meals ready to eat. It was cold, they were hungry, they were tired, they were battle fatigued. I want to remember those in Korea, the Forgotten War, that served and came home with no acknowledgement. And finally, I want to remember the Vietnam veterans, those high school seniors that waited to see if their number was going to get pulled. They didn't have a choice to go to college. They were going to Vietnam. They went to a war that was unpopular. They went to a war they didn't want to be in, but they served proudly. They served with honor. Some died on that battlefield, and some die a little every day from, the ex from Agent Orange and its complications. They will die heroes years after their battle, but they too will give their lives for their country. Without these sacrifices of the brave men and women, we would not have the freedom and liberty we have today. We are immensely privileged. We are free to pursue our basic freedoms so many around the world do not have access to. We cannot let Memorial Day be just another holiday weekend, another shopping discount, another day at the beach. We must always remember. We need to continue to take part in activities like this that remember those that have given so much to this country. I truly appreciate the blessings that have been bestowed on me living in this country. And I want to recognize those that have made the ultimate sacrifice so that I may live in this great country. American soldiers personify personal courage, both physical and moral, facing fear, danger, and adversity on a daily basis. They put the welfare of our nation above their own. They carry on the high tradition of many before us of selfless service. I'd like to thank those that have served this country and remember those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. On behalf of this veteran and every veteran here, I want to thank you for remembering what today really means. This was the point of our program uh, where we played the armed service melody in the recognition of the branches of service. 
we have our uh, wreaths of each one of the individual branches of service in front of us. So next I'm going to introduce uh, former principal Kevin Conwell, who's been a huge part of this event for as long as I can remember. As a veteran of the Marine Corps, I know that this ceremony always held a special place in his heart. Quietly assisting behind the scenes, I'm happy to introduce Mr. Conwell as our next guest speaker. That was a corporal. <laughs> Name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Though baseball players always bless themselves before they go up to bat, so I want to bless myself before I speak. In November of 1863, the President of the United States traveled to Gettysburg. He traveled to Gettysburg to dedicate one of the first national cemeteries that was spoken about early. He spoke for two minutes. You know, he set the scene. He reminded us that we were involved in a battle to achieve the goals that we set forth in the Declaration of Independence. We recognize we didn't achieve them yet. And we have not achieved them today. We're still working towards them. Afterwards, he, he recognized, you know, the people who were being put in that cemetery. Americans, so many Americans. You know, we started the National Cemeteries in America, in the United States of America, because we were killing each other, because we were so divided as a country, we needed a place to put them. He finished with a call to action. He said that it is our duty as the living to make sure that we achieve the goals that have been set forth in that Declaration of Independence. We're better than we've ever been, but we're not there yet. You know, I encourage you to read the Declaration, to read the Gettysburg Address for reminders of what we are trying to achieve as Americans. You know, what is this all about? Why are so many people dying? It doesn't have to be that way. We set forth goals that can show how we can become a world that is united. And as Christians, we've got it all. If you listen to the readings tonight, if you listen to Father, if you reflect on, on the gifts that God has given us, we can make the world a better place. And we can then do honor all those people who have died. That's what's most important. I want peace. It begins as we sung this day with me. I have to find peace in myself, practice that peace, and then seek peace wherever I go, in the moments of every day. That's where it happens. Be present now. Doesn't matter what happened in the past, what's gonna happen in the future. The only thing we can do is be present. Every day I pray, God, equip me to do your will. Thank you. So a few years back, during the course of my duties as a guest speaker at this event, I accidentally started uh, this portion of today's program. I said the names of my friends who died in service of this great nation, then invited anyone in attendance to raise their hand, be acknowledged, and say the names of their fallen comrade, their son, their brother, sister, daughter that died in a line of duty. 
and speaking the names of our fallen comrades, we send a message that although they may be gone, the sacrifice made is not forgotten. They are not forgotten. Specialist Dale Patterson of Tucson, Arizona, U.S. Army. Specialist John Kulik of the 1st and 111th Infantry, PA Army National Guard from Jenkintown. Staff Sergeant Bradley Fox, U.S. Marine Corps, and Plymouth Township Police Officer. At this time, I invite the veterans, Sergeant Major. Richard Moore, a private in the United States Marine Corps, he was 17 years old. Thank you. Thanks, sir. At this time, thank you for sharing, veterans. At this time, please remain seated for Amazing Grace.
see that. Please stand for the final prayer. Heavenly Father, at the conclusion of our celebration today, thanks and praise. Allow the spirit of gratitude to our hearts as we honor our brothers and sisters who have fallen true and honorable. Peace the money you can give. May your breath allow us to build a world harmony with your spirit, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of right courage, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of fear of the Lord, which gives the world the spirit of peace. The king of priests, peace, who is Lord ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, everyone. to speak as the master of ceremonies. Uh, Ignacio, Debbie, 
Elizabeth, please stand and be recognized. Well, just raise your hand and be recognized. Thank you. A special guest to our uh, correction. A special thanks to our guest speakers and Father Bellapini. A uh, big thank you to the students and faculty of St. Mary's School for uh, me and the other local veterans. Welcome today. Memorial Day weekend, and remember why. Following the retirement of the colors, this concludes events. Are welcome to join me in the hall for refreshments. Sergeant Major, retire the colors. Thanks, Sergeant Major. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.